Uh, what's going on people uh, welcome back again to this channel that's all about architecture engineering and construction okay and uh, my name is Darwin uh, so today uh, we are going to be discussing the cost of building a four bedroom house well it's not necessarily a four bedroom house um, uh, let's say it's a five bedroom house okay I'll explain to you shortly why basically this is just a, this is a Mediterranean this is a Mediterranean design okay this is a Mediterranean design uh, uh, and basically those who have had quite a good experience in construction know that um, the Mediterranean style of construction is a bit usually more expensive than its equivalent in the conventional style of construction okay uh, but anyway uh, all that aside uh, today I'm not really going to uh, talk so much uh, let's just basically briefly go through what this house is and what it entails before we actually now begin breaking down the costs uh, first of all, uh, here is the floor plan. This is the ground floor. Uh, so we have this large entry porch, okay, that allows you into the living area. The living area is quite spacious, as you can see. Then uh, we have um, we have our dining here. We have our kitchen over here. We have a foyer. We have a foyer here that leads into the guest's bedroom. The guest bedroom. The guest bedroom also happens to be self-contained. Then we have uh, this common toilet that uh, the daytime visitors can always use, okay, whenever they want to take a short call or a long call. Then on the side, we also have this uh, uh, the laundry area where you can install your washing machines and you know put their uh, the dirty clothes and all that. Uh, then we have the stair that leads the upper stairs uh, that leads upstairs, sorry, that goes to the to the first floor. Uh, so we have our kitchen here we have a small kitchen pantry shelf over here as you exit the house into this small porch now this is the guest bedroom so this is the staff quarter this is kind of like the staff bedroom okay now that is what makes it the fifth bedroom so it's kind of semi-detached eh? so this staff quarter is also uh, self-contained uh, basically that is what it is for the ground floor we have the parking over here it's not part of the main structure so if you go to the first floor, as you can see, uh, we have this this large balcony. Okay, uh, we have this large balcony over here. Of course, we entered this floor from here, from the stairways here. We have a small home office here that has its balcony. We have um, we have this bedroom here that is self-contained. We have this bedroom here that is self-contained and has a false balcony. Okay. Uh, then we have the master bedroom it has a walk-in closet and uh, it also has a big bathroom okay uh, so basically that's what it is um, and then also this master bedroom has a small balcony over here on this side of the house okay um, uh, i'll be showing you the artistic impressions uh, so you can uh, you can better understand what this house actually looks like on the outside okay uh, so like I earlier said, uh, this is uh, quite a spacious house. Uh, first things first, uh, this house has uh, 145 square meters uh, on the ground floor and also uh, just about 145 square meters on the upper floor. That includes the that big balcony, okay? Uh, so we are looking at about 290 square meters of total floor area, okay? Uh, that's quite large. So when you're categorizing this house, so you really, you surely cannot categorize it under a small structure okay uh, so all, all that being said um so we have our first phase of setting out you know setting out buying the timber and strings as you can see on the screen that will cost just about three hundred thousand shillings okay then um the foundation works including the plinth now this includes the the pad footings uh, also includes the starter columns and also includes the plinth wall okay um well, we are making our plinth wall with the uh, clay bricks and then the pad footings are going to be made of reinforced concrete uh, so we have excavation works as a lump sum of course this one really depends on uh, where exactly you're going to put the project uh, the condition of the place so here we're considering just a mild slope that is there that might just need a little clearing okay so um excavation marks might cost you just about 1.2 million and uh, then the cost aggregates uh you'll need uh, six forward trips each at uh, 350,000, which brings you to 2.1 million you'll use 12 meter 12 you'll use 12 millimeter steel bars those are basically to be put in the pad footings eh? um making the mesh for the pad footings okay then we have uh, the 16 millimeter bars uh that is uh, that includes the ones that actually come through the starter column to the top of the the ground floor slab eh? 
then we have r7 rings we have black sand we have plaster sand binding wire in those quantities as you can see okay then we have hard core uh, so for the hard core uh, we'll need just about six strips uh, which uh, bring us to a total of 1.44 million okay uh, then you have cement you need the uh, timber for showering the sides that is holding the, uh, the 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 columns in place and all that as they are being cast while they are still wet of course depending on the construction methodology that you've actually used uh, then we'll need the uh, dpm is the basically the damp proof membrane that is just before we actually cast the ground floor slab eh? then we'll need clay bricks for the plinth walls we need six thousand of them uh, considering clay bricks uh, uh, just about 350 shillings um, uh, bring out a total of clay bricks to 2.17 million so basically the whole foundation including the plinth walls is just going it is going to cost you just about uh, 17.24 million uh, then going to the ground floor slab uh, those who've done construction before know that the slab is one of the things that take the most amount of money in construction okay most especially if it's a reinforced concrete slab now in our case um, we are doing a reinforced concrete slab but we are not reinforcing with uh, with these bigger steel bars you're reinforcing it with a brc okay which is what you actually see here so we will need cost aggregates just about 14 trips which are 350k bring out to 4.9 million we'll need 12 millimeter steel bars no we do not need that's why it's zero because in this case you're only considering the beam and the slab so in the slab you're using brc and then in the beams we're using 16 millimeter bars okay so we don't need the 12 eh? so um 16 millimeter bars you need just about 35 pieces each at 65,000. this really varies 65 67 really depending eh? Um, then R7 rings, we need leg sand, we need plaster sand. You realize in most instances, we always need more leg sand than plaster sand because uh, when you are mixing concrete, uh, leg sand always gives a uh, stronger mix than plaster sand. So when we are doing those mixes, we always make sure that the ratio of leg sand to plaster sand is usually higher. In some cases where the buildings are high rise, we always uh, actually even eliminate plaster sand from the mix in general, okay? Though it's cheaper. Um, so we will need binding wire, we will need maram, we will need cement, uh, timber. So bring that whole subtotal of the slab work and, and the ground floor beam to 21 million and 60,000 shillings. Now our total of the whole foundation complete with the slab complete is just going to 38 million, 300,000, 304,000, sorry, okay. Uh, so uh, going now to the ground floor columns and the block work. Uh, you will need cost aggregates. These are basically for the columns, just about two, two, trip, two trips, two forward trips, each at 350k, bring it to 700,000. You'll need 16 millimeter bars. Those are the ones that actually run through the columns, okay, that go to the next floor. Then you'll need uh, rings, you'll need leg sand, you'll need plaster sand, you'll need binding wire. Then we will need uh, 4,300 hollow blocks, which are 2,800, bring our total to 12.04 million. Uh, then uh, if you count all the cement and all the timber, the subtotal for basically the ground floor columns and the block work as well will cost you just about 18.9 million. And then so now our total so far of what we've spent is uh, going to 57 million 264,000 shillings. Okay, uh, so uh, going forward and uh, now going to the first floor beam and the stairs and the slab. That's quite a lot of concrete. Uh, we will need cost aggregates, we will need BRC. BRC is basically what we are going to put on top of the hollow slab. We are using a hollow slab. Uh, when I say hollow slab, I mean that we are using max pans to fill up some spaces, okay? You can see max pans right here at the bottom. So we are using both max pans and reinforced concrete. Uh, in my country, that is what has proven to be the, the most cost-effective method when we are doing things to do with hollow slabs. Uh, so we also have scaffolding, we have timber bottoms, uh, we have um, all these really, you can understand them. Um, so we have the subtotal of the floor slab, including the stairs and the slab, uh, costing just about 29.8 million. And the total now has gone to 87 million, 131,000 shillings. Okay, so going forward, uh, the first floor columns and the block work um cost aggregates uh 16 millimeter bars of course uh rings leg sand plaster sand um as usual you can see the rushes of uh the leg sand and plaster sand uh, leg sand is always 
more than plaster sand if you're to have a strong structure uh, then we have binding wire we have hollow blocks uh, of course we need just about 3800 hollow blocks each at 2800 uh, bring our total for blocks to 10.64 million then we need cement uh, all that so the subtotal is costing just about 16.8 million okay uh, then our total general in what we've spent so far right from the foundation up to where we are now is that we have 103 million and 991,000 shillings uh, so so heading on to the next item which is uh, the ring beam uh, you realize we'll need the uh, cost aggregates we will need uh, three trips each at 350k bring the total to 1 million then we we'll need uh, we don't need 12 millimeter bars uh, we'll need 16 millimeter bars we need r7 rings we'll need uh, plaster sand we'll need uh, binding wire cement timber that brings our total to about 7 million so now uh, summing up all the total we have just about 111 million now heading on to the parapet walling uh, the parapet wall is basically that pole that is above the ring beam and that goes uh, straight to the roof uh, some some houses you know you might want to have a high ceiling okay that does not necessarily just stop at the ring beam but slightly high above the ring beam okay so that's what you're considering to be as the parapet wall um, as you can see it as well it also requires just about 3.1 million in total so we are now at 114 million now finally for this phase we are we are completing it off with the roofing roofing nails uh we need the ordinary nails the four inch nails six inch nails five inch nails then we will need the uh, timber uh, three by two four by two six by two we need rubber washers we need iron sheets of course these iron sheets really vary a lot uh, this is for example the ordinary versatile iron sheets you might want to go for the tile profile iron sheets uh, that might range from seventy five thousand per sheet you know it really depends um also uh based on the, the the prevailing conditions on site even the number of iron sheets uh depending on the workmanship of who are actually cutting the iron sheets you know cutting those triangular pieces out of them to bring out the roof that might also vary as well okay um which might also determine the number of ridges and valleys that you might need to use but generally uh the roofing should take you up to 15 point eight million roughly okay so now everything uh up to the roofing you can see that our materials have cost us 130 million shillings okay this does not include labor so of course uh, together with the roofing uh, the ceiling as well should come in handy you know uh, so that uh, we seal off that part completely so that you now we've done the ceiling we've done the roofing um we've done basically the shell of the house uh but we've not yet done the plastering we've not yet done the fitting in of the windows and all that and the different plumbing systems uh, so basically this is what you will need uh, some things might vary here and there but they should not vary with, they should vary within plus or minus 10 percent of what we are quoting here so this is uh, to say 90 percent accurate uh, then um, you might also uh, notice that some things will change of course uh, for example when we are doing the plumbing the plumbing i might quote for the plumbing at a later stage uh, in the next phase of the construction but remember at this stage while you are doing the construction uh, some pipe work will actually be needed you know you won't um, you won't build and then come on start breaking slabs so you can pass through the pipe work for the toilets you know so some things like plumbing might be brought forward even the conduits for the wiring they might be brought forward for example when you are laying the slab for the first floor uh, the conduits have to already pass under the slab before the, the slab is actually cast in so you might find those conduits might need to be bought before the time at which this has been quoted so that that is very important as well but basically this is what you need um then plus also maybe miscellaneous things uh, that we might not have quoted for things that might come up also the prices that we quote for might also not have included the um, the delivery of these materials to site okay that's another cost that you should incur so basically this should be inaccuracies between um plus minus 10 percent you should be safe to have this money for you to complete your house up to the roofing stage then you can wait for phase two of doing the plastering doing the painting doing the electrical fittings doing the tiling and all that stuff okay uh, boundary wall septic tanks but basically for this phase up to the roofing you'll need just about 134 million shillings okay 
yes otherwise thank you very much guys for watching if this information has been very helpful to you uh, please subscribe and uh, like the video so that more people can actually see it uh, otherwise thank you very much for watching and have a good time i'm darwin <laughs>